Hello, welcome. We've got a problem here where we're applying uh, our way of using a function with an exponential formula. We're told here a few things that the air resistance, right, we're looking at air resistance of a free falling object is proportional to its velocity. And we have an equation below where t is time and v is that velocity. So here's the equation. And what I would do is just take a moment, pause the video, and try it on your own. Press play, and then we'll solve it together. So they want us to find three things, assuming that p is 0.25, first the initial velocity, and then we can do two and three together, which is about the velocity at a certain time and its terminal velocity, which is about an asymptote, because we can solve those two parts with a graph. So uh, the initial velocity is at time equals zero. So we're finding v of zero, which is just 32 times e to the negative 0.25, that's our p value times 0 minus 1. And this ends up being 32. And the e to the negative 0.25 times 0 is just e to the 0, or 1, right? Because negative 0.25 times 0 is 0. And anything to the 0 other than 0 is 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0, right? So 32 times 0 is 0. That's our answer. And the second one, you could repeat the same thing. You could find v of 10, which is 32 times e to the negative 0.25 times 10 minus 1, and you get an answer, but I think it's useful to graph this. So let's do that. So we want to enter our equation 32, oops, 32 times, so I'll put parentheses, second ln for e, negative 0.25x, and then minus 1, and you want to get a graph of this, um, but even before we do that, let's just look at a table of this thing. So table, second graph is table. Here I'm already at 10, and you can go to a second window to hop around at different points. You can have it start at a certain table value, and you could tell it what increment to go up by here. It's by ones. So I'm starting at 10, which is what I want to answer this question. And there's our answer, negative 29.373. So let's write it down negative 29.373. And the object's maximum or terminal velocity, you can actually kind of see it here in the table, right? Look at these values, 31.9. And it's taking longer and longer to scroll down to move up. So I'm moving up at a slower rate, and now I'm just kind of stuck. You can see that I'm approaching at 81. I'm at really close to 32, and I'm approaching 32. And if you look at the graph of this, you can change the window Let's do y max of 100, and just not y max. Um, the y max only needs to be like 40 because we're approaching 32. The x max should be what we want to extend here. Let's go to 100. And does that look good? Not at all. What did I do? Let's see. x min is negative 10. x max is 100. We're going by a scale of 1. OK. Should look better than that. So here, the shape of this graph, hmm, let's go back to the table. Maybe I misread something. Oh, negative 32. So if we go to, sorry about that, you go to window, if you want to do our x min, our y min at negative 40, and the x, the y max at 10 or something, keep it simple. There's the shape I'm looking for, right? Really distinct shape. So we're approaching negative 32, getting closer and closer and closer as we go along. And you can hit trace to see that, right? We're zooming down, and then it very distinctly approaches 32. And you can zoom in on that. You can go up for higher values. If you really want to jump ahead, you're not convinced, you can go to table set. And let's just start the, um, let's go up by hundreds, and let's start at 1,000. And let's go there. So you can see here that at this point, I have, we're going up by a faster increment now, and we're really far along. You can see very obviously that's sticking with 32. All right, so here, that means that the this, we're mapping the velocity of this thing. There's a limit on that velocity, velocity a number that we're approaching, and that's uh, negative 32, right? So, and that's just here in the table. All right, I hope this helped.